Today, once again, we'll tackle one of the toughest, craziest, most popular fan games out there, Poke Road. It's a roguelike game that randomly generates a new challenge every time you start a new run. It has mega evolution, fusing, dynamaxing, and even terrestrialization, including Pokemon from generations 1 through 9. And the last time we played this was... Flashback. I hate this game now. I'm never playing this again. End of flashback. But this time we're playing as the world's number one trainer, Ash Ketchum. We'll only be using his Pokemon team members and their evolution lines. Whether you're new to all this or you're a Poke Rogue fan who spent hours on the game like me, hit that like button if you enjoyed because it's time to get the team together. We'll start with some of Ash's best team members, Pikachu, Chimchar, and Starly the Sinnoh All-Stars. We breeze through the starting floors and luckily Pikachu's a great counter against our rival's team of P-Dove and Oshiwai, along with the addition of a little Caterpie as well. If you know about the early Pokemon anime episodes, you know why beating this boss Spearow with a Pikachu feels a bit nostalgic for me. As we burn through the levels, Chimchar fires up to a Monferno and we face the fire type Scorcher of Unova, Gym Leader Chili, who faces our Metapod that was unfortunately leading at the time. Dermaka incinerates Starly, so we turn up the heat by sending in Monferno to quickly mock punch it. Pansir is up and it's a big monkey battle including punching, scratching, and licking where our Monferno came out as the victor. We have a quick round of evolutions before Ivy appears once more. Duot cuts Staravia with Razor Shell before we can finish it and then brings out her Heracross, which we easily counter with our Butterfree and she double counters with a Tranquil that has Super Luck, making this so much more unnecessarily difficult. It one shot a Pikachu at Fly, which is great, but luckily Monferno's monkeying around and priority Mach Punch helps us in this battle. Then by a of luck we were able to roll a sacred ash and bring back the team. We chop and burn through the forest floors until Jim Lear Burr buzzes in, who we instantly burn with our newly evolved Infernate. Better luck next time, bug boy. Ivy shows up, but we beat her with ease with our awesome Infernate, leading us to find a Primate that becomes an Annihilate along with a Thunderstone for Pikachu to evolve with. A legendary floor boss appears, the fast, mythical Latios, with a bee barrel that just wandered over here. But for our team, it was nothing but light work. Then we get our final team member, Torterra. But before we reach level 100, Ivy and her Terra Water Samurai doesn't faint to our Stab Electric Thunderbolt from Raichu. And it's raining, so his water moves are boosted. Great. But that wasn't even the issue. It was this stupid, fast, super luck unpheasant running rampant, ending the team with this run with nothing but critical hits. We restart the run with the same Sinnoh trio, quickly getting us through the starting floors and grabbing a Fletchling on the way. Our rival isn't much of a threat and the floors we've been going through mainly have water type Pokemon for Pikachu to just shock down, along with a Croconaw that we catch. Suddenly, Bug Gym Leader Viola appears, whose whole Bug Squad gets squashed by Fletchender and later on Ivy's team suffers the same fate. We run into a Pidgeot that we caught just to immediately replace it with a Primate that we immediately replace with a Torterra. I really couldn't make up my mind on who the last team member should be. We also face Fire Gym Leader Chili whom our bird duo easily blew away. Ivy appears once again where we have an honor battle, where it's our Gator versus her Terra Water Gator. Luckily an early Intimidate from Star Raptor allows us to survive the superpower she hits us with. Then it was followed by a hyper beam that kind of scared me, but our Gator ended this honor battle with a crunch. Then Infernate and Talonflame cleaned up the crumbs of her team. We ventured deeper into the forest, running to Burry again, who gets flame swept by Talonflame. Transitioning into the jungle area, running into an Ambipom, and I always wondered why Ash fully let go of Ambipom or Apom, because I feel like it would have been super super cool to have in more battles. Even though it led to having Weasel, you know, I think it could have had some awesome battles. In respects, we catch it along with the, another Apom, and with that monkey business handle, we go into the swamp area where Torterra takes on anyone and everyone. Then Roxy appears, and I'm not sure what she's doing in a swamp. Swamps don't really have poison type Pokemon like that. We both switch out our Pokemon, me into Talonflame, and her into her Terra Poison Swalot. It makes the mistake of touching us though, and gets burnt making it light work. However, Drapion lands a ceaseless edge putting spikes on our field, then finishes Talonflame with a Dire Claw, and after looking it up, 
This move sounds super broken. Luckily, it was burnt as well. We scare it with a gator switch in, and she scares us right back with a Venusaur switch in. Staraptor breaches the skies, making quick work of Drapion and Garboldor with Aerial Ace and Brave Bird. We quickly discover that Raichu is not as fast as I would like it to be. Despite the dire situation, plus the rainy weather, Infernate goes on a raging, fiery, blaze boosted sweep that honestly surprised me. Finally, ending this battle with a breakthrough on its confusion to mock punch Venusaur. Just like Sinnoh, Infernate's the MVP of the team. A few moments later. Man, I hate this game. Alrighty, new run, new opportunity for us to win. And we can't get past level 25. Great. Alright, this run we got the Sinnoh Trio plus Lycan Rock until we face Bugsy in the rain but maybe we'll be able to great all right slight change to the team instead of using the Sinnoh goat chimchar we grab the hoenn goat trico this is great because we easily counter our rivals oshawa but to compensate she now has an aerodactyl yay despite that we push on giving star ravia acrobatics catching Mankey, and pikachu's just here for the vibes we fly through floors being gym leaders like erica and her grass team and we enter cave grabbing a bulldog that has weak armor making it a lot less useful and now our arrival is waiting for us at the lake her samurai somehow once again defies fate and lives the stat crit thunderbolt just to water pulse pikachu into the lake also it's raining if anyone was wondering but little did she know we had some terrestrialization up our sleeves as well terror flying star after soars into battle this along with some worthy sacrifices from the team helps us win and we can finally take a little breather until the water gym leader comes out and yes it is still raining luckily pikachu comes out to do nothing but faint so the team's goat star after has to do most of the heavy lifting while paralyzed please leave a like for the amount of carrying star raptors doing right now then Septile barely survives a bounce to land a giga drain to win this tiring stressful battle we hit the beach for some fun in the sun and catch a crap before making the worst decision in this game so far going to the island area why you ask because it's full of a lowland pokemon that our team can't properly counter i myself truly don't know how we got through this level but despite us being low on morale and me thinking the run was over, Septile's Mighty Leaf Storm beats the floor boss and we go into the open seas. This was a lot more manageable. Along with the addition of Floatzel replacing Kringler, things were looking up, just for the game to splash us in the face. Despite Marlon's appearance and his Inteleon knowing both Arrow Blast and Shearing Shot for no reason, Sceptile was able to Giga Drain his whole team and we dove deeper into the sea. Fun fact, do you know it can rain underwater? Neither did I, but I guess it's our luck this round just being terrible. And now our rival is here, with her Terra Water Samurai. But that didn't even matter, because she countered every move I tried to make and swiftly knocked out the team, ruining this run. Might be time for a change of plans. I used the egg vouchers from our previous runs to crack open a new team that will take us to the end. Now we have Rowlet, Corfish, Cyndaquil, and Hoop Hoop, all with some special egg moves. Plus, our rival got one of the worst starters in Pokemon, Chikorita, which makes the battles with her so much easier. We ripped through the lower floors with ease, cooking up Grass Gym Leader Silent with Quilava, entering new locations like the construction site in the dojo where we eventually caught a Scraggy, despite me looking for a Lucario. However, the dojo's leader, Brawly, wouldn't let us leave without a fight, so Noctile and Decidueye easily schooled the master. Ivy appears just to get swept by Noctile, which makes me feel like this team has the potential to win it all. We fight through the grassy field, back into the city, into another construction site, grabbing one of Ash's OG Pokemon, Muck. We return to the dojo to play another round of easily sweeping our rival with our Noctile, and again, no luck finding Lucario. We did find a boss, Sir Fetch, but too bad we can't catch it. Gym Leader Chili appears for battle, but he wasn't ready for Crawdonk's Crab Hammer hitting his team until we get hammer armed by Darmanitan. Scrafty head smashes his way into the battle, then he gets cooked by off-brand Infernape over here. 
So we just swifted and continue our journey. We burn our path through the first, cooking Berg and his bug team along the way as we enter the jungle region, facing our rival once again. But this time she's hitting us with the creepy stare and the Rex signature line. So you know what that means. She switches Terra Grass Boss Megalium with Metagross so Krata comes out forcing her to switch in response. Then we had a little switch battle with Muck proving that it's a pretty good pivoting tool and Krata's ceaseless edge places spikes. So now her switch ins are taking damage. We crunch down her Megalium but the real threat, Boss Rayquaza, descends. Scrafty took out its first health bar which could have been a second but it wanted to miss the head smash. Then Noctile comes in showing that it's the real MVP of the team by boosting its speed via Esper Wing, then Air Slashing and Moon Blasting through the remainder of her team, until Boss Rayquaza comes back again. We proudly tank the Hurricane and Moon Blast this monster to the ground. And can I say, this Noctile is kind of unreal. With that win, we're basically past the part where we were last defeated in our previous Pokero video that you should definitely check out after this one. We wandered through an ancient graveyard full of ghosts into an ancient ruins area full of psychics. Ending with a face off against gym leader Tulip. Her Velusa gets swiped by Ceaseless Edge and we switch away from Galave, sacrificing Muck. And no, we didn't have to sacrifice it. Decidueye forced her to bring in Farigarath, forcing us to switch again. We switch Tricker into bringing Farigarath back out where she meets a Leaf Blade attack followed by her Espeon fainting from Phantom Force. We almost one shot her Terra Psychic Espathra with a quick Shadow Sneak but it lives and side beams us. Typhlosion tries to finish it but Galay returns so Krada has to take the hit instead so that Noctile can Moon Blast it down. Chimeco is crunched and Espathra Spathra is cooked with flamethrower. However, little did we know what was to come would be so extreme and so stressful. We flew through the floors but immediately stopped by the lonely Elite Four member, Mulane, who I definitely didn't have to look up because I know my Pokemon knowledge to a T. He starts with Terra Steel Aggron against our Muck who could do nothing but get heavy slammed. Crawdon Ceaseless edges in some spikes and he makes the mistake of bringing out Clef Key, allowing us to Swords Dance and Crab Hammer it down. Followed by a crunch on Magnezone, then X Scissor Durant comes in to ruin our sweep. Forcing Typhlosion to come fire things up with Flamethrower, leading to his defeat. Next, Olivia appears, so Decidueye comes out with a Leaf Blade to cut her team down. Her counter? A big blizzard, instantly freezing Decidueye and making me realize that I misplayed because I should have just shadow sneaked. Krana cuts in with a ceaseless edge on her Almado switching, tanking the bug bite and hitting hard with crab hammer. Lycanroc comes out so Muck sacrifices itself for the team, allowing Scrafty to safely come in and break break her Terra Rock Cradley switching. Then brings out Barnacle that lands a tough claws boosted cross chop. Great. But not only that, it tanks the crab hammer and lands another one. Typhlosion comes out to do nothing because it's a fire type, and all that's left is Noctowl. And this woman has nothing but rock types, so we're pretty screwed. The run's over. Is what I would have said if Noctowl wasn't the MVP of the team. Noctowl dodges all the stones thrown at it, attacking back with Esper Wing and boosting its speed. And thanks to the damage done by our fallen team members, the spike damage is enough to instantly knock out most of her team. With that that victory we sacred ash the team back and go to the next challenge ghost girl ace Aurora, who honestly was the first easy battle we had here since Krada could easily outspeed and crunch everything in its path and when it fell decidui finish off the ghost scraps the final leaf form member is kahili who specializes in flying types starting with norverm who we run away from immediately we send in muck muck tanks the double arrow blast attack side note why does it know that crushing it with its newly learn move rock slide. Psychic Oricorio comes out so Crawdon is brought back in where it tries to crunch but she counters with Halucha. Expecting a high jump kick, we switch into Decidueye but it bounces instead. So Muck returns for the hit. We try to sneak a crab hammer on it but we miss. We try to trick again but she changes her strategy going for air slash over Psychic. Luckily Crawdon survives and lands a surprise crab hammer. Krona is crushed by the American superpower, so Noctile comes in to speed up with Esper Wing while tanking America's attack, leading to its collapse. Terra Flying 2 Cannon couldn't do much and switched into Terra Flying Skymarine. That almost ended us with a crit drill peck. We finish it, but it has a Reviver Seed. 
letting it land a steel beam on us. Too bad it's not the only one with a reviver C, you stupid bird. Its steel beam recoil damage takes it out. Now Oricorio returns and confuses us, but I didn't feel like dealing with those odds. So Typhlosion comes out and roasts it plus the rest of these birds. But this isn't over yet, folks. Because before we can even take a breather, Champion Gita stands before us. Scrafty breaks her Terra Ice Vanellix with Brick Break, then her Terra Electric Maridon comes out. Decidueye comes in on the Electro Drift where we vanish with Phantom Force, which really worked out because her Terra Dark King Gambit comes in and misses his Sucker Punch. Scrafty tries to Brick Break it, but she brings Maridon back in. So this time, Decidueye goes for a Leaf Blade on the incoming King Gambit. Scrafty sacrifices itself so we can safely bring in Crawdon and Ceaseless Edge for Spikes. We thought she would keep Maridon in, but she brings out her Glamora on Decidueye, forcing us to bring Muck in who surprisingly was not able to finish the job and got burnt with Fiery Dance. Luckily, it's time for the MVP to come in and clean up. And we're out of PP for Esperine. Crap. Double luckily, Crawdon comes out making her switch her Velusa into a Crunch. Then her other Pokemon go down like dominoes from good old Spikes damage. Then one more Crunch on Espothra for the road. With that, we are at the final 10 levels of this game. They're full of Paradox Pokemon, and I haven't said this in a while, but after fighting Elite Four and Champion, with much pride, I can say this is the run. Ivy appears for our final rival battle. Boss Terra Grass Meganium stomps away from the battle, bringing out Meta gross and then we played the whole switching game that these higher floors now require until it's Noctowl and Meganium again. We air slash a health bar away but out of nowhere it's overgrown boosted Pell Dance absolutely destroys us. Then upon further review it was more than just overgrow. The berry that was holding popped which is the Starf Berry that randomly sharpens one of its stats. And unfortunately for us it was its special attack stat. So now we're dealing with Overgrown plus special attack boost plus terror grass plus it didn't flinch meaning we just have some terrible luck here. Despite that we shake it off and Decidueye soars in with Brave Bird. Her boss Pidgeot comes in so Typhlosion roasts it with Flamethrower. Then her boss level shiny Mega Rayquaza comes out from the heavens. We eye it down, ready to slam it into the ground. It proceeds to hurricane sweep the whole team, not missing one hurricane attack, ending the run. I'm never touching this game ever in my life. 